Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. San Antonio police still have not found four men. They say shot two teens at a southeast side apartment complex. New warnings after an Iranian commander is killed, what Iran is promising to do next, and how the U.S. is responding. I'm Karina Mitchell in New York. I'll have that story coming up. And live cam giving us a look outside, 43 degrees. Mountain Cedar is around. I can vouch for that. And good morning to you. It is Monday. It is January 6th, and everyone is back in the house this morning, including... Someone you know is Leslie Mouton. It is so good to be back. I had a wonderful vacation. Hopefully you enjoyed your holidays. But it's really good to be back. When I was driving in, even though the alarm went off at 2, I was like, I miss my family. It's good to have you this back. family. We are all here, and it's cold. It's cool. It's cold. I mean, this is normal. You know, we're down yeah. to where we should be. This is still the, historically the coldest time of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got mostly clear skies out there, except there's one uh, minor glitch off to the east. First of all, temperatures, comforts up to, or down to, I should say, uh, freezing. 33 in Kerrville, 43 here in town. We're not done cooling off as of yet because we do have clear skies and pretty dry air uh, relative to the temperatures and light wind. More freezing temperatures out in portions of the hill country. And then off to the east, 47 Gonzalez, 47 in LaGrange and you look at the dew point temperature. So you got 100% humidity out there to the east and with that with some other factors, we do already have some fog showing up in Gonzales. Just it was about seven miles half an hour ago and it dropped down to three quarters of a mile visibility. So off to the east, watch out for some fog this morning. Speaking of mountain cedar, you had to bring it up, Leslie, didn't you? I thought we could avoid this 26,760. We have another front moving through later on tonight. Of course, today's updated reading is going to be coming out about 7 o'clock this morning. But yeah, it's just ridiculously high. But this is mountain cedar season this morning. We're going to continue to drop down a few more degrees, low 40s, a lot of upper 30s, even freezing temperatures and that fog off to the east. So definitely need to coat this morning. You won't need it by this afternoon. 72 degrees, a beautiful, beautiful day. We're going to be back down to reality tomorrow. We also have don't get your hopes too high, but a little bit of rain in the forecast later on this week. Details coming up. Time saver traffic right now. Here is Officer Marcus Trujillo. Well, Happy New Year. Good seeing you, sir. Well, Happy New Year. Good to see you too, Mike. But uh, just a bit of advice on that uh, pollen count. You don't, you're not supposed to add the last three days to get the mountain cedars. Just one day because the number's a little high. Right now, as we take a look at the roadways, uh, not too bad on this Monday morning. More than likely, everyone will be back to work and back to school. So... Just get used to that uh, normal uh, slowdown that uh, comes on a little bit later on. Right now, 35 is a lot of creek so far. No issues northbound or southbound. Taking a look at I-10 and Callahan. Eastbound and westbound lanes looking pretty good with no problems here. 281 at the quarry. Mark. Thank you, Marcus. San Antonio police still searching this morning for four men. They say shot two teens at a southeast side apartment complex. Happened just before 9 yesterday morning at the Pecan Valley Golf Club Apartments on Pecan Grove. Police said the victims were sitting in their car when four men showed up and started shooting. A 16-year-old girl was shot in the back and a 17-year-old boy was grazed in the leg. Both were taken to Brook Army Medical Center, but they are expected to be okay. The four men, believed to be in the late teens and early 20s, got away in a white four-door car. In your other morning headlines, Iranian officials continue to vow revenge following the killing of the country's top general. ABC's Karina Mitchell has the latest. Overnight, President Trump doubling down on striking cultural sites in Iran as tensions escalate in the Middle East after the killing of Iran's top military commander. Trump said the U.S. will strike back if Iran retaliates, citing 52 possible targets identified in Iran, some of them cultural sites. That comment drew criticism because targeting cultural sites could be considered a war crime under international agreements. As you know, the Geneva Conventions outlaw attacks on cultural objects and places of worship. We'll behave inside the system. We, we always have and we always will. In Iran, all 290 members of that country's parliament chanted, quote, death to America. And the general who's replacing Soleimani is vowing to, quote, take revenge as the country announces it will no longer abide by the uranium enrichment limits in the 2015 nuclear deal. The back and forth threats come after President Trump ordered the strike on Qasem Soleimani near the Baghdad airport last week. U.S. officials claim they had intelligence that he was going to carry out acts that would cost American lives.
It's impossible to overstate the significance of the attack that takes out Qasem Soleimani. In response, Iraq's parliament, in a non-binding decision, has voted to expel U.S. troops from the country. Back here at home, Democrats are criticizing the president after he appeared to declare his tweets would serve as notification to the United States Congress that should Iran strike any U.S. person or target, the United States will quickly and fully strike back. You know, I hate to say this, but I think it's President Trump raising his middle finger at the Congress. Here at home, there is no specific threat, but officials warn Iran does have potential assets inside the U.S. as well as cyber warfare capabilities. Karina Mitchell, ABC News, New York. The Pentagon says three Americans are dead following a terror attack in Kenya. The Pentagon says the attack happened at the Kenya Defense Force airfield in Manda Bay. It reportedly was carried out by al-Shabaab, which has previously pledged allegiance to al-Qaeda, according to U.S. Africa Command. The attack also damaged rotary and fixed-wing aircraft on the ground. Soldiers from the Kenya Defense Force and the U.S. Africa Command pushed the al-Shabaab fighters back after they gained entry to the facility. One of the Americans killed in action yesterday was a U.S. service member. Two Department of Defense workers were also wounded in the attack. Firefighters from the United States have arrived in Sydney to assist their Australian colleagues battling those raging wildfires. Australian naval officers also meeting with local authorities to offer help. Residents in many towns and cities have been advised to leave for evacuation centers. Rain has started to fall, but not across all fire affected areas and not enough to douse the flames. Those deadly fires have killed two people and destroyed hundreds of properties. Four people are unaccounted for. Cooler weather has allowed military choppers to deliver supplies to isolated communities and help with evacuations. A North Texas church has opened its doors for the first time following a deadly shooting. People walked into the West Freeway Church of Christ yesterday morning. Last Sunday, during communion, a gunman stood up and opened fire, killing two people. A member of the church's security team returned fire, killing the man. One of those killed Richard White. He was also a member of the church's security team. He was buried last Thursday. The funeral for Deacon Tony Wallace, who was also shot and killed, will be next Saturday. Five people are dead, dozens of others injured after a multi-vehicle chain reaction crash on a Pennsylvania highway turnpike. It's just tragic. The accident, which shut down the turnpike for several hours, involved a bus traveling from New York to Ohio with two semi-trucks. Here's ABC's Zachary Keish with more on that. A deadly chain reaction crash on the Pennsylvania turnpike early Sunday morning has left several people dead and dozens more injured. We have five people that did not survive the crash. Uh, we have several people that were transported to area hospitals. Uh, we believe it's around 60 total. A passenger bus traveling from Rockaway, New Jersey to Cincinnati, Ohio, lost control, went up on an embankment and rolled over. It was subsequently struck by two tractor trailers. Another tractor trailer came and collided with those two tractor trailers. And there was another passenger car that was also involved. Lamar Brady, a passenger on that bus, took this video shortly after the crash. He suffered minor injuries and spoke with ABC's Pittsburgh affiliate, WTAE. One of the guys, they kicked open the thing and said, everybody needs to get out, everybody needs to get out. There was one guy on top of me, and I was pushed up against the window. So we were just trying to figure out how to, you know, and get up and off the bus. Many of the injured were triaged at the scene by emergency medical services. They were really dispatching patients to multiple hospitals and making a decision of where to take those that were maybe what we call walking wounded as opposed to those that were more critical. The accident shut down the turnpike for hours. According to authorities, some drivers on the road reported there was a change in weather, but it's still unclear whether that played a factor in the crash. The road conditions seem to be fine in that area. We treat all night long. The NTSB is heading to the scene to assist in the investigation. Zachary Keish, ABC News, New York. Just terrible. Unbelievable. 439 on your Monday morning, 43 degrees. It's one of Hollywood's biggest nights. We're going to show you the best moments of the Golden Globe Awards. And next, the Spurs getting another shot at taking down the Milwaukee Bucks tonight after losing to them over the weekend. Come on, guys. Go, Spurs, go. And taking a look outside with live cams. If you suffer from cedar fever, you're in big trouble. <laughs> you have been for days, and it's getting worse. I saw drone video out of Austin yesterday, Lake Travis area. Yes. And it was where the, the breeze had picked up that pollen and taken it airborne like a small. It's the cloud. Yuck.
San Antonio Spurs kept up the with, with the Milwaukee Bucks for nearly th three quarters this weekend, but then the Beast of the East pulled away to win 127-118. The Spurs will get another chance against Milwaukee tonight. Spurs host the Bucks over at the AT&T Center starting at 7:30. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Days after watching the Cowboys season come to another disappointing end, team owner Jerry Jones finally making that statement that ends the 10 year tenure of Jason Garrett. Jones says the team will not seek to uh, extend the contract for Jason Garrett. Also reports Jones has already interviewed at least two former NFL coaches to replace Garrett. The most recent former Packers head coach Mike McCarthy, who according to Calvin Watkins, spent the last few days with Jerry and Stephen Jones. Cowboys have also talked with former Bengals head coach Marvin Lewis. Now we wait to see what the Joneses decide as to who will be leading the Cowboys going forward. Meanwhile, the Houston Texans headed to the next round of the NFL playoffs after one of the most exciting wild card games we have ever seen. Coming from 16 points down to win the game against Buffalo in overtime with a field goal this weekend. Houston plays KC on Sunday, 205 at Arrowhead Stadium. The other AFC playoff game, Tennessee at Baltimore, coming up on Saturday night. Right now it's 443, 43 degrees. Still ahead, Jeffrey host Alex Trebek saying he knows what he will say to the audience during his final show. And a big night for many actors, the Gold Globe last night. We'll have some highlights coming up right here on GMSA. Welcome back. It is now 446. Now to Hollywood's Golden Night, the Golden Globes. Tom Hanks was in tears. Ellen DeGeneres was honored for her career. And host Ricky Gervais targeting just about everyone. ABC's TJ Holmes has details in your GMA First Look. Hey there, folks. TJ Holmes here in Hollywood. It's a heck of a show, right? Saw a lot during the Golden Globes. A lot happened. But you know there's some stuff you didn't see. A whole lot of stuff. A whole lot of good stuff you didn't see. And it happened right here. Backstage. Here's your GMA first look. Aquafina, the Who just made history? It's the first woman of Asian descent to win this particular award. Yeah, yeah, I, I, that was information that's relatively new to me. That's an incredible to, to, to break through, to break down that door. Um, and then there's this other side that you really hope that there would be more, and you hope that um, if now's the time, you know, that it continues on. I, I can't be the, the last. And that's just a little taste, a little sneak peek of some of the stuff that took place back here. We had every A-lister just about come through after they gave their speeches, came back and hung out with us backstage a little bit. You'll see much more of that coming up on GMA, of course, 7 a.m., and I will see you there. But for now, this is your GMA First Look. Thanks, TJ. 447 on your Monday morning. Pretty much everybody's back to school, yeah. I believe, today. So the roadways could be a little bit busier. It could be a little congested a little bit later on. So, folks, you may not want to you may not want to wait too long before you head out the door and venture out on uh, today. Right now, as you take a look at the roadways, no accidents right now. So that's the great news. Let's take a look at Transguide. You can see I-10 and Frio inbound outbound lanes. No problem for the upper or lower decks of I-10. Both directions running smoothly at this point all the way through I-10 at Callahan. 281 at Nakoma, north and southbound lanes so far. No issues, more than enough room right now. And 410 at Fredericksburg, you can see no delays at this point. So all in all, not a bad time out there uh, for your commute at this time. And there's 281 410 up there by the airport so far. No delays. So that's the great news. Bad news is, kids, yeah. we'll be waking up here in a little bit because it is back to school. Yes, it is. It's kind of that uh, that funky time of year. You were talking about taking down decorations and yeah. how it leaves oh, it our she's kind of sad. Yeah, and it leaves our homes kind of dark and empty these days. Please don't talk about she's it. He's gonna cry, and his Hallmark <laughs> movies are over. I mean, there's just a lot of depression. No, actually, over here. they're still running a few of the Christmas Hallmark oh, movies. Oh, are they? So, oh, good. Well, I, I was trying are. to. I was just slowly weaning myself for the past couple of days. So, have you taken your decorations down yet? Not yet. All done. Oh, you did it. All done over the weekend. So it was gorgeous to do that. You know, we were talking about that late last week, how this is going to be the perfect weekend if you had to take down the outdoor decorations. And uh, it was fantastic. And by the way, a little little hint of what's to come. Um, we're going to make it two weekends in a row with looks like perfect weather this past weekend and the upcoming weekend. Great. KSAC Connect picture, and the caption says, 
Nice looking clouds. Hey, um, are y'all not showing KSAC Connect pics anymore on the air? Sure do miss them. We miss them too, and I guess the best thing to say is technical difficulties. You know how computers can be, and you just can't find that little glitch in there, and we were having some problems there for a while, but got it all worked out. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. Make sure you keep them coming. Uh, it's going to be a beautiful sunrise this morning, although further off to the uh, east, we do have some fog, which is forming up. I'll show you that in a moment. Freezing temperatures out in portions of the Hill Country. Tarpley Comfort Kerrville now down to 31 degrees 41 Bull and 43 out there at the airport. Colder obviously off to the northwest and then milder temperatures here along the coastal plain uh, mid upper 40s and dew point temperatures are pretty much neck and neck with the actual air temperatures and so we do have a little bit of fog out there. Pleasanton is uh, showing just a hint of fog right now. Gonzales is up to one mile. So off in our eastern counties, we have to watch out for just a little bit of this patchy fog this morning. So we've got the higher humidity off to the east and obviously drier air in portions of the hill country. And as time rolls on, here comes more of this drier air and the winds going to be shifting around. This is going to be later on tonight with the front that moves on through here and we get this bone dry air sliding on in. We actually see some dew points once again down in the single digits out there in portions of the hill country. So pretty good a shot of colder air. It's going to put us back down to basically reality tomorrow. This morning we're starting off where we should be pretty much with uh, dew point temperature, or excuse me, with air temperatures down in the low 40s, but we get up to the 70s. Tomorrow we stay in the uh, low 60s for a high temperature, and there's that front that moves on through here, and then humidity comes back up by the end of the weekend, drops back down again just in time for the weekend with another fantastic uh, just, I mean, it's going to be lots of sunshine and very pleasant temperatures. Upper level winds, there's the first front that moves on through that little uh, glitch right there. And then we get a slightly milder toward the uh, middle part of the week and the latter part of the week. And that's going to be pulling in more humidity as well as that chance for some rain by, say, maybe Thursday, early Friday. It's looking okay right now. I wouldn't get your hopes too high for a lot of rain. 66 degrees today at noon, mostly sunny skies, and then a high temperature today on the warm side, 10 above normal, 72, a beautiful, beautiful day. Light wind out of the west. Now, the wind's going to be picking up late tonight when the front moves on through here. It's going to be breezy tomorrow. 61 degrees for a high temperature, and then we'll drop down to the uh, mid 30s by Wednesday morning. A lot of sunshine in the afternoon on Wednesday, and then the clouds move in later on. A couple of showers Thursday as well as early Friday, and the front's going to come through Friday evening. That'll clear us on out, and once again, another just beautiful, beautiful weekend. I'm not going to complain about it. Mm -mm. As long as we can squeeze out some decent rain by in the latter part of the week. Wash away some of this mountain cedar. Sheesh. Thank you, Mike. 452, 43 degrees. Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker continues its box office reign into the first week of 2020. We'll have more on that, plus what Jeopardy host Alex Trebek plans on saying during his last show. Here are lottery numbers. Pick three, seven, one, three, Fireball eight. Daily four, one, three, six, six, Fireball nine. And your cash five, five, 24, 26, 32, 34. And your lotto numbers, 17, 20, 21, 25, 27, and 44. And Saturday's Powerball numbers are 111, 21, 25, 54. Seven is your Powerball, and your power play is two. Entertainment news and a box office victory fit for a Jedi. Plus new details about rocker Rod Stewart's alleged New Year's Eve altercation. Here's ABC's Trevor Alt. The 2020 box office began where 2019 left off. The Force will be with you. With Star Wars Rise of Skywalker still on top. The J.J. Abrams film following Rey, Finn, and Poe as they lead the Resistance's final stand took in $33.7 million and is closing in on a billion worldwide. Welcome to Jumanji. Jumanji The Next Level came in second with $26.5 million. Followed by the 2019 version of coming-of-age drama Little Women, directed by Greta Gerwig, which came in third with 13.6 million. A February 5th court date has been set for rocker Rod Stewart and his son. The two are accused of punching a security guard at a private event on New Year's Eve. Both face a simple battery charge. And finally, Jeopardy host Alex Trebek says he's already rehearsed what he plans to say to the audience on his final show. Trebek, who's hosted since 1984, announced last March 
March that he's been diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer. No word on when his last episode will tape, but Trebek says he'll ask the director to leave him 30 seconds for his final thoughts. And happy birthday, Eddie Redmayne, the actor best known for his roles in Red and The Theory of Everything, turns 38. That's what's happening in Hollywood. Trevor Alt, ABC News. Three minutes till five, 43 degrees. Harvey Weinstein is headed to court for his first criminal case. And Boeing may be facing even more problems with the 737 MAX. We'll tell you about the latest issue they're facing. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Police say four suspects involved in a shooting on the southeast side are still on the run. We'll have a live report. Disgraced media mogul Harvey Weinstein goes to trial today for his first criminal case. Outside with live cam, 43 degrees at San Antonio International Airport. Mike is back, so is everyone else. Good morning to you. It is Monday. It is January 6th. Thanks for being with us this morning, everybody. If you still write checks, you got to get used to doing that 2020 now. That's right. Uh, some folks are back today at school. Some may be back tomorrow or Wednesday. Yeah, we mentioned earlier in our last half hour that it, we thought everybody went back. Apparently, SAISD and SCUCISD don't go back until tomorrow. Let's check in now with Mike, see how the forecast is looking for our back to school, back to work week. As you head out the front door this morning, make sure you grab a coat because yes, it is uh, pretty chilly out there, especially in portions of the hill country. We've got 43 degrees as mentioned here in town, but it is freezing up around Kerrville and Uvalde's at 39 and then some milder temperatures off to the east and that's where there's a little bit of fog. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, Wind chill, slight breeze there. Not, wind's not going to be a huge ordeal today, but tonight, different situation. And you know what that's going to do to those mountain cedar numbers? Hate to even talk about it. 32 as well in Comfort, 35 Hondo, 42 Stinson as well as Randolph. And then you look off to the east and we've got some much, much higher humidity out there with those dew points about the same as the actual air temperatures. And so there is some fog. Gonzalez was up to one mile. Now it's back down to a quarter mile visibility. And that's the only spot reporting any fog. But again, that's just one reporting station. So you may have a little bit more fog off to the east and watch out for that uh, for over the next couple of hours because obviously gets a little bit thicker. Pleasanton was at seven miles last hour. Now it's back up to 10. The fog is also there. The fog of mountain cedar making heads foggy as well. I think 26,760. It's just ridiculous. Uh, like I said, wind is not going to be a huge deal today, but we've got another front moving through overnight tonight, so it's going to be shaking up those trees again tomorrow. Mostly sunny, warm, and then cooler back down to reality. We'll be up in the low 70s today. Beautiful tomorrow. We've got a few showers by the latter portion of the week. Wouldn't get real, real excited for a lot of rain, but at least there'll be some out there. And then we are setting up for another great weekend. Details on that coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo. Anything yet? Well, right now, Mike, things look pretty good out there as far as the roadways. So currently there are no issues uh, that should delay you. So you should have a pretty easy commute to just watch out for the other motors out there on the roadway. Now take a look at Trans Guide. You're looking at I-10-1604, the interchange up there on the northwest side. So far, no issues there in the other areas like I-10 and Frio. Traffic still running smoothly at this point. Mark? Thank you, Marcus. San Antonio police still searching this morning for four men who allegedly shot two teens on the southeast side Sunday. It happened at the Pecan Valley Golf Club Apartments on Pecan Grove. Our Sarah Costa is live downtown with what police know so far about those suspects. Sarah? Good morning. Well, police are still investigating, but what they know so far, it was at least four men that pulled up in that car and they got away in a white four door car. Police say those four men pulled up to the parking lot at the Pecan Valley Golf Club Apartments to the two teen victims sitting in a car. Police say the men opened fire at the 16 year old girl and 17 year old boy sitting in that car. The girl was shot in the back and the boy was grazed in the leg by a bullet, police say. Both were taken to Brook Army Medical Center, but they are expected to be okay. One of the weapons was recovered by police on scene. As for those four men, they are believed to be in their teens or early 20s. Live from downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. Thank you, Sarah. Jury selection begins today in Harvey Weinstein's trial in New York. The former mogul, movie mogul, I should say, is facing first and third degree rape charges brought by two women. This is the first criminal case against him. He could face up to life in prison if convicted on the most serious charges. 
An Iranian general who replaced the leader killed in a U.S. airstrike in Baghdad is vowing revenge. That says Tehran has abandoned the remaining limits of the 2015 nuclear deal. The threat comes as blowback over the U.S. killing of a top Iranian general, Qasem Soleimani. It's in addition to Iraq's parliament calling for the expulsion of American troops. The developments could bring Iran closer to building an atomic bomb or a military attack launched by Tehran against the United States. President Trump is threatening to demand compensation from Iraq or impose sanctions if it goes through with expelling U.S. forces. Well, speak while, meanwhile, Speaker, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is urging House Democrats to move swiftly to rebuke President Donald Trump following that airstrike. In a letter to Democrats, Pelosi says the House will introduce and vote this week on a war powers resolution to limit President Trump's military actions regarding Iran. The president has reiterated his controversial view that cultural sites in Iran can be targeted if Iran carries out its threat to retaliate. The bushfires in Kangaroo Island, Australia, have nearly wiped out their entire koala population. Amid the disaster, there is a story of hope for these adorable creatures. KC Trelor has more from Australia. Burnt, injured and bewildered, koalas needing care are arriving by the trailer load. They're all stunned. Rick Fisher and his neighbours saved these ones from their properties, some barely clinging to life. I think this little fellow, he's too far gone. Yeah, he's too far gone. The survivors are under critical care at the Kangaroo Island Wildlife Park. It's been inundated, taking in dozens of severely burnt animals a day. Unfortunately for some of those animals, the, the best thing is uh, humane euthanasia straight away. There's just no chance. The impact on wildlife is breaking hearts. This environment has been completely, completely changed and I don't know that it will ever, ever come back and be the same. Park owner Dana has her hands full caring for these survivors around the clock. Every day they're getting pain relief, all of these guys are. Uh, we're also treating them for severe burns on a few of them, minor burns on others. This little orphan, Ash, was brought in two weeks ago when the fires first started. She suffered horrific burns to her hands and feet. Fortunately, she's on track to make a full recovery. She is a great ambassador for what we can do for some of these koalas. Hope amidst the devastation. They're so cute. It's a tragic story. and We keep hearing horrible things about how bad things are down there. They, they've had to call in the Australian Navy to help, help evacuate civilians. One of the largest uh, military evacuations in modern history taking place down in Australia right now. One of the things that I found interesting is the story about how Australia sent a lot of their firefighters to California when they had the Camp Wildfire and the really bad ones here. And now we've sent a bunch of our guys to go help as well. You like to see how we help each other out. It's our turn. Mm -hmm. 507, 43 degrees. Ahead in Tech Bites, we're going to show you the weirdest gadget coming out of the Consumer Electronics Show. And yes, it involves a toilet and a robot. And next, another flaw for the 737 MAX. Boeing has bad news. That's coming up. And live cam giving us a look outside. The bad news, mountain seating. The good news, we're in for another treat weather-wise this week. Welcome back. It's 11 minutes after 5. In your morning consumer headlines, another potential herder for Boeing. The company is admitting that there is another potential issue with its 737 MAX. The New York Times reports Boeing and regulators say there are concerns about the wiring. A spokesperson says the company's highest priority is ensuring the 737 MAX meets all safety and regulatory requirements. He added that Boeing is working with the FAA and others to make sure the design is safe and compliant. The MAX was grounded in early 2019 following two fatal crashes caused by issues with a different system. Boeing is still waiting for regulators' approval to return to flight. The spokesperson says it's too soon to tell if the analysis will result in any design changes. Bed Bath & Beyond has cut a deal to sell about half its real estate to a private equity firm, then pay rent. The company plans to use about $250 million in cash to help fund a turnaround. The deal includes selling its New Jersey headquarters and several of its store locations. And Mercedes is recalling around 750,000 vehicles in danger of losing the sunroofs. The recall affects the C-Class, E-Class, CLK class and CLS class made between 2001 and 2011. The company says sunroofs on those cars are at risk of just flying off 
if material around it deteriorates. That'd be a big old bummer. <laughs> no kidding. 512 right now, 43 degrees. More on new toilet paper robot that is creating a buzz at the annual Consumer Electronics Show. Gonna wipe out the competition. <laughs> uh, Samsung getting ready to announce its newest Galaxy phone. We'll tell you when it is set to launch. These are real people, not actors, who've got their eczema under control. With less eczema, you can show more skin. So roll up those sleeves and help heal your skin from within with Dupixent. Dupixent is the first treatment of its kind that continuously treats moderate to severe eczema, or atopic dermatitis, even between flare-ups. Dupixent is a biologic and not a cream or steroid. Many people taking Dupixent saw clear or almost clear skin and had significantly less itch. That's a difference you can feel. Don't use if you're allergic to Dupixent. Serious allergic reactions can occur, including anaphylaxis, which is severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems, such as eye pain or vision changes or a parasitic infection. If you take asthma medicines, don't change or stop them without talking to your doctor. So help heal your skin from within. And talk to your eczema specialist about to fix it. 515, Samsung expected to unveil its newest smartphone next month. ABC's Kenneth Moten and Elizabeth Herr have details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, Samsung is ready to roll out some new products. The company says it will unveil its Galaxy S11 phones on February 11th. Analysts expect three new devices, as well as a foldable rival to Motorola's Razer phone. Features could include 5G, a new camera, and a new battery. Samsung will also follow through on its plans to sell its rotating television outside of Korea. The TV called the Zero has a 4K display that can swivel between landscape and portrait. The Consumer Electronics Show is getting underway in Las Vegas, and here is the high-tech gadget getting much of the attention. Charmin is flushed with excitement over its new so-called Rollbot. It's a robot that will fetch a new roll of toilet paper for you in your time of need. It's all controlled by your smartphone. A TP robot? It's 2020, y'all. We all need it, right? Those are your tech bites. Low expectations for this year's CES when the hottest thing is a toilet paper robot. Robots. Yeah. That is, you know, that's a good point. And we, we talked about it yesterday during GMSA, or last week during GMSA at 9, about how there weren't uh, many super duper newfangled things this year other than this robot. Which just means that we've reached the pinnacle of what you can come up with right now. Yeah, there's still a bunch of stuff, though, for sure. Let's check on the roadway, see how traffic is looking, Marcus. Now, if they invented a robot that can actually TP a house... Hey. That I'd be impressed with. How about one that can DTP a house? Yeah, that'd be even better. <laughs> right now, as we take a look at the roadway, still no accidents, so great to start to this week on this Monday morning. I-10 is 604, still no issues there. 281 at the quarry, north and southbound lane, still running smoothly with no problems there. 281 at 410. Take a look at I-10, 604, no problems. And then 35 at Salado Creek, north and southbound lanes. Starting to get a little bit of a move on. Not too bad. Southbound lanes still light as far as the volume of traffic so not a bad time out there on the roadways the important thing is roads are dry real quick some of the other things they're showing at ces this year uh another streaming service to compete with uh, disney plus that's and, what we need and M nbc's upcoming peacock but also 8k and 16k television technology we're kind of get a sneak preview of stuff that's down the road we've just bought the four i know like, how, many, what how, is, many, how many k's what can is, you have you just yes <laughs> And what, is there not a limit to the case, people? Yeah, it's kind of like the line from um, Wall Street. How many yachts can you water ski behind? How many Ks do you need on a TV? Thank what, you, Gordon Gecko. Or just when all the cell phones were getting smaller, remember SNL skit, where the phone was this right. big. <laughs> oh, yeah, Will Ferrell, hello? <laughs> and now the phones are getting bigger, the iPads are getting smaller. Yeah. And but the Ks what, are growing. What do all the Ks mean? What does that do for you, Mark? It means more money for the people that are making them. It means it costs more. Okay, keep up with Joneses. More K's means more cash. Yep. All right. A uh, beautiful weekend, and some folks went down to Corpus Christi, and there is the USS Lexington, the Gray Ghost. And what a beautiful day on the coast. Yes, it was. Thank you very, very much for that KSAC Connect picture. Really appreciate that. We are starting off this morning with a lot of clear skies and some pretty chilly temperatures uh, freezing out in portions of the hill country. Tarpley's down to 31 right now. Same thing at Kerrville. 42 Randolph, 43 here in town, 45 New Braunfels. And a little bit 
a little bit milder off to the east, but the big difference off to the east is these dew point temperatures are the same as the air temperature. So you've got 100% humidity, very light winds, some other factors, and that's why there is a little bit of fog to deal with. As a matter of fact, it's a well, fairly thick fog actually right now in Gonzales at a quarter mile visibility that has dropped down. has been kind of going back and forth and then elsewhere it's not bad. So it looks like it's just going to be off to the east. Some of that patchy fog this morning. We've got the relatively higher humidity off to the east, but front is going to be coming through and there it is right about uh, mid evening tonight, say 9, 10 o'clock. The winds will be shifting around. It is going to be breezy, so you know what that's going to be doing to the mountain cedar trees because, of course, mountain cedar reading is up to 26, might as well be a million as far as mountain cedar is concerned, but it's going to get another good shake later on tonight. We'll have some uh, breezier conditions and we've got some bone dry air coming on in here in the hill country with those uh, dew points down in the uh, low teens and even single digits out there. Now, as far as the next couple of days, we drop down with the humidity and then dew points come back up as we go in toward the end of the week. And this is right where we're going to be seeing at least a chance for some rain. There is another front which will start to work its way in our direction. That's going to be coming through later on Friday, but the chance of rain is going to be Thursday into early Friday. Um, I don't know if it's a fantastic chance right now, but at least we'll see some showers, maybe even a, a couple of thunderstorms out there right now around the country. I mean, there's just not a heck of a lot going on. Most everything is moving uh, basically straight west to east across the northern portion of the country. And for us upstream, there's nothing out there. So we do have some beautiful, beautiful weather. Uh, the front's not going to tonight do anything except shift the winds around and shake up the mountain cedar trees, which more than nothing out there. That's that's quite a bit. Uh, 66 degrees today at noon, mostly sunny skies, high temperature on the warm side. So we start off about normal at roughly 40 and then get up to 72. Now after the front, it will knock temperatures back down just to normal readings, low 60s and don't even see any clouds from it, basically. It is going to be much colder than by Wednesday morning, down around 36 here in town. So pretty good freeze in portions of the hill country. Clouds will move in late Wednesday. Uh, we will have a few showers around on Thursday and maybe even lingering into the first part of the day on Friday. And then we'll clear out Friday night with the next front, which will come on through here. And that's going to set us up for another just sensational weekend. We'll take it. It would be absolutely perfect if we got a bunch of rain, then a perfect weekend. Yeah, Thursday. Thursday's a great day for a bunch of rain. See what you can do. Work on that, would you? 522, 43 degrees. Ellen DeGeneres and Tom Hanks receive special awards at the annual Golden Globe Awards. We're going to take you there. Coming up next. Pick three numbers, 713, Fireball 8, Daily 4, 1366, Fireball 9. And your cash buy, 524, 26, 32, 34, lotto number 17, 20, 21, 25, 27, a lot of 20s, 44. And Powerball, did you win any money, Mike? No. Uh-huh. 111, 21, 25, 54, with a Powerball of 7 and a power play of 2. The Hollywood Awards season kicked off in typical fashion Sunday night with stars from movies and television, plenty of alcohol, and a host with absolutely no filter. That's the truth. CNN's David Daniel has highlights from the 77th Golden Globe Awards. This is the last time I'm hosting these awards, so <laughs> I don't care anymore. Um, I'm joking. I never did. Some of Golden Globe's host Ricky Gervais's other jokes had to be bleeped out. The same went for Joaquin Phoenix's speech after he won Best Actor in a Drama for Joker. There is no greater feeling than when someone tells me that I've made their day better with my show. No bleeping needed as Ellen DeGeneres and Tom Hanks received special awards just because they're Ellen DeGeneres and Tom Hanks. Two TV trophies apiece went to the comedy Fleabag, the drama Succession, and the limited series Chernobyl. Bong Joon-ho, Best Foreign language film winner for Parasite urged audiences through a translator to see more foreign films. Once you overcome the one inch tall barrier of subtitles, you will be introduced to so many more amazing films. <laughs> Renee Zellweger won Best Actress in a Motion Picture Drama for Judy. Top acting prizes on the musical or comedy side went to Aquafina for The Farewell and Taryn Egerton for Rocket Man. 
Longtime collaborators Elton John and Bernie Taupin got a standing ovation and their first ever award together for their new song from Rocket Man. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood won a trio of trophies, Best Motion Picture Musical or Comedy, Best Screenplay for Quentin Tarantino, and Best Supporting Actor for Brad Pitt. And Sam Mendes won Best Director and Best Motion Picture Drama for 1917, about the horrors and the waste of war. I fervently hope it never ever happens again. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. I think 1917 opens this week. Been waiting quite a while for that one to come out. I know you've been really excited to see it. I'm ready. Right now, 527, 43 degrees. Still ahead, U.S. officials are meeting with Iraqi counterparts this week regarding the situation with Iran. We have the latest coming up. A huge crash on a turnpike in Pennsylvania kills five people. We will have more. And a beloved musical based on an Irish pub's going on tour. A closer look at the Choir of Man. Monday morning, January 6th. Thanks for being with us this morning. Hopefully you had a terrific holiday, both Christmas and New Year's. Time to get back to work and school, though, for most people. Yes, back to work, back to school. But And the other reminder is uh, that means school zones. Going to have to pay attention to those school zones once again. But right now, the good news is no accidents out there. We need rain around here in mm -hmm. the worst yeah, way. Yeah, we do. Maybe by uh, Thursday, early Friday, we do have a chance for uh, some rain. Today's, of course, a very special day. The, the 6th is the 12th day of Christmas. This is the That's the, right. You the remind us that every today, year, and so. I forget about that until you remind us. Yes, indeed. A lot of people leave their decorations up, their trees up until today, and this is the, the day when they take them down. So uh, if you had a chance over the weekend, though, to take your outdoor decorations down, just to Beautiful. be outside was fantastic. Today, a cold start, but um, grab a jacket. You won't need it by this afternoon. We're in the low 40s, even some uh, low 30s and some freezing temperatures in portions of the hill country right now. There is some fog off to the east and then plenty of sunshine later on today. 72 degrees. Now we've got a big front moving through tonight. Two things. Cool us down to normal readings and it's going to shake up the mountain cedar mm. trees once again. Uh, yeah, a lot of people are doing more than that. We do have uh, mostly clear skies and you can see a beautiful view looking off to the east. Sunrise should be spectacular this morning. Down to 30 right now in comfort. 31 Kerrville as well as Tarpley. Uh, 42 Balverde, 43 out there at the airport in Port SA right now at 39 degrees. A little milder in Canyon Lake and further off to the east. Temperatures are a little bit milder and we've got a lot more humidity, relatively speaking, off to the east. And with that and some other factors, we've got some fog around Gonzales at a quarter mile visibility. That's the only uh, reduced visibility as of right now being reported. And so uh, just kind of keep an eye out for the next couple of hours. Now, later on, we will have that front move through tonight, and it's probably going to give another good shake to the mountain cedar trees. Hopefully this number drops down a little bit when the this morning's count comes out about uh, 7 o'clock or a little bit thereafter. But uh, yesterday's count was very, very high. 26, it even went up from Saturday, 26,760. Yep, this is the heart of the mountain cedar season. Hopefully we get some rain by later on in the week. I'll just leave you with those numbers, unfortunately. Time saver traffic right now. So nothing going on yet, Marcus? So far, it looks pretty quiet out there, Mike. Uh, no increases in the traffic just yet, but it's still a little early for that. And fortunately, no accidents right now. So let's take a look at the Transguide once again. Uh, we changed from the map over to Transguide 21 Nakoma, north and southbound lane still running smoothly at this point with no delays in 604 Petranco. As you can see, traffic in both directions running smoothly this morning. Leslie, Mark. San Antonio police say a man who led them on a chase from a scene of a Southside shooting last month told investigators he swallowed heroin just before he was arrested. Because of that claim, an affidavit says first police first released Francisco Javier Gonzalez to paramedics after the chase December 18th, which began near Canavan Avenue. Gonzalez is now formally charged with evading arrest and unauthorized use of a motor vehicle. The day Gonzalez was arrested, police were looking into a shooting when officers found a car matching the suspect vehicle description. Officers tried to make a traffic stop, and that's when the chase began. Police say Gonzalez drove through the stop signs, among other traffic violations, instead of pulling over. He later crashed the car roughly four miles away and ran on foot before police caught up with him. Police say Gonzalez actually wasn't involved in the shooting. He just didn't want to pull over because he was in possession of narcotics. U.S. officials meeting with their Iraqi counterparts this week in Washington. As CNN's John Lawrence reports, the relationship between the two countries is under strain following Friday's fatal strike against an Iranian military leader. 
Thousands flood the streets of Tehran this weekend to honor Iranian General Qasem Soleimani. Soleimani was killed by a U.S. drone strike Friday at Baghdad Airport. Back in the U.S., President Trump issues a warning, tweeting that if Iran attacks any American asset, the U.S. will hit them harder than they have ever been hit before. We will defend America and the strikes we took over this past week, including killing the terrorist Soleimani. Uh, we will continue to take if we need to. Iran, likewise, is making threats. It was America that started the war. Therefore, they should accept appropriate reactions to their actions. The response for sure will be military and against military sites. On Sunday night, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi sent a letter saying the House of Representatives will introduce and vote on a war powers resolution that limits President Trump's potential military actions in regard to Iran. I really worry that the actions the president took will get us into what he calls another endless war in the Middle East. Uh, he promised we wouldn't have that, and I think we're closer to that now because of his actions. Meanwhile, French President Emmanuel Macron, German Chancellor Angela Merkel, and British Prime Minister Boris Johnson issued a joint statement calling on all parties to exercise utmost restraint, saying there is an urgent need for de-escalation. I'm John Lawrence reporting. A suspect is in custody in Florence, South Carolina, after allegedly shooting and killing an airport public safety officer. It happened at the Florence Regional Airport when the officer was conducting a traffic stop. An official with the South Carolina Law Enforcement Division says the suspect ran away but was later found and arrested. At first, entrances and exits to the airport were blocked, but the airport has resumed normal operations. Five people are dead, dozens others injured after a multi-vehicle chain reaction crash on the Pennsylvania Turnpike. The accident was shut down that turnpike for hours, involved a bus traveling from New York City to Ohio and two semi-trucks. According to authorities, some drivers on the road reported there was a change in the weather, but it's unclear if that played a factor in the crash. The NTSB is assisting in the investigation. In your morning consumer headlines, the cost of your chocolate fix could be going up. No! The West African countries of Ghana and the Ivory Coast, which export more than 60% of the world's cocoa, are now combining to create their own chocolate cartel. They've immediately upped the price on exports by $400 a metric ton. And for the first time in his 60 years of business, Little Caesars is going to start delivering. That's thanks to a new deal between the country's third largest pizza chain and delivery service DoorDash. Of course, that's going to drive up the cost of their cheap, hot and ready menu items. Here at KSAT, we're launching a new segment called Leading SA. GMSA's Max Massey will be sitting down with leaders of San Antonio to talk about current issues in our community, what's being done to solve problems and about the future. The first interview will be with Mayor Ron Nirenberg, and we want you to get involved. So right now on KSAT.com, you can submit your questions that we ask the mayor. Leading essay will air on GMSA on Sunday mornings at 8 a.m. Just go to KSAT.com to submit your questions right now, and you could see your questions asked tonight. 537, 43 degrees. It was a big night for film at the annual Golden Globe Awards. We're going to take you behind the scenes. After some of the actors took home some big honors. And next, an interactive jukebox musical based on an Irish pub is going on tour. And live cam giving us a look outside. It's a little bit cool this morning. You definitely need a jacket, but it looks like it's going to be a beautiful day. Ever wish you could randomly walk into a pub, be immediately welcomed by friends you've never met, and regaled with song and dance? Who wouldn't, right? <laughs> CNN's Rick Davigella introduces us to the Choir of Man. Most pubs have a football team, a darts team. This pub has a choir, always has, and we are the Choir of Man. So wake me up when it's all over. Go down the pub, grab a pint, sit back, and enjoy the show. That's the idea behind the Choir of Man. We like to say it's the best pub gig you've ever been to. Uh, it's a mix of a, a concert and immersive theater experience uh, where the audience come in and they meet nine guys, the Choir of Man, who become their friends through the course of the 90 minutes of the show. Um, uh, we, the show is all about togetherness and what better way of coming together than sharing a pint with your mates in your local pub. If you like being a collider, what will you hear at a Choir of Man performance? We have uh, some traditional folk in there, some Irish folk. We have a bit of Queen, a bit of Guns N' Roses. We do some Adele. Um, so we cover all bases, really, and we kind of put our folky twist on all of that, singing in nine-part harmony at times. Hi. 
and all the harm that ever I've done. As the show takes place in a pub setting, adult beverages may be served if you are of age, and don't be surprised if you leave having made some new friends. And we're all good friends as well. Um, so what you see on stage, that's what we're like off stage as well. Um, and there's no fourth wall on the show. So we get to meet the audience members every night. We invite them up for a beer. The audience leave feeling like they've made nine new friends. And all I've done for want of wit To memory now I can't recall Wishing I could sing like these guys in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Happening today on the world famous Riverwalk, a portion of the main channel is set to be drained. The procedure will start today at 1 p.m. and will go through Thursday. Restaurants and hotels will be open and operating at their same hours. Officials say maintenance of the Riverwalk is crucial. It hasn't happened in a few years. For more information about when the river cruises will be back operating, check out the story on KSET.com. By the way, our Sarah Costa will have more and a live report coming up at 6.30. I caught the, the Christmas lights one last time Saturday night for a river barge run. It's a great idea to do a staycation before they take it all down. And we timed it just right. Mm -hmm. It's 542, 43 degrees. Coming up next, it was a big night for Hollywood. We're going to go backstage with the winners of the Golden Globe Awards. By 45, award season officially underway with the Hollywood Foreign Press Association celebrating its choices for the best of the best at the 77th annual Golden Globe Awards. ABC's George Pinocchio takes us backstage with the winners. 1917. The Golden Globe ceremony proved victorious for the World War I centered film 1917, which took home two big awards, best drama film and best director for Sam Mendes. With no big names on the marquee, Mendes says the backing of Steven Spielberg was key to getting his movie made. When you send a script like this out and somebody like Steven says, this is incredible, I love this, I want to make it, you, you know, it's, it's thrilling. Joaquin Phoenix earned the Golden Globe for Best Actor in a Drama for Joker. The category's Best Actress, Renee Zellweger, for her role in Judy. People still want to share about what she means to them 50 years after her passing. It, it says so much, doesn't it? Once upon a time in Hollywood! Once upon a time in Hollywood shined brightly with three wins. Best comedy film, best screenplay, and best supporting actor for Brad Pitt. Listen, it's nice to be acknowledged. It's really, really nice after all the work. The best actor in a comedy or musical trophy was awarded to Taron Edgerton for Rocket Man. Best actress in a comedy, Aquafina for The Farewell. She's the first Asian American woman to win in this category. It was uh, pretty mind blowing. I think it's, it, it, it feels um, incredible, but I think there's also a, uh, this other feeling that um, you want there to be more. I think this is this. I hope this is just the beginning. Yeah. The Golden Globes are over for another year. Next up on the awards list, the Oscar nominations. They come out on January 13th. In Los Angeles, George Pinocchio for ABC News. And the 24th season of The Bachelor premieres tonight, right here on ABC. 28-year-old Peter Weber, a Delta Airlines pilot from California, was chosen to be this season's Bachelor. That's after finishing third on the 15th season of The Bachelorette featuring Hannah Brown. Hannah actually makes an appearance on this season of The Bachelor, which actually sparked some controversy because the other girls who were on her were like, that's not fair. She's already had her chance. Well, so happy. she's one of the actual bachelorettes. She's showing up, yes, as part of one of the oh, bachelorettes I on she was the. Just, oh. And they're like, you yeah, know, that's not oh fair. Oh my gosh, I had. Drove. Wow. I know. You I, better start setting your DVR right now, gentlemen. I had not kept up. I am now fully informed. I'm sure that our six o'clock producer Joy hmm. will be taking notes and giving us updates on a daily. I'm basis. sure she will. That has a whole new conundrum to it. It's a conundrum. That's right. Hopefully, Fun. there are no conundrums on the roadway. Not at all. Five forty-eight, <laughs> Marcus. <laughs> Nothing like what's going on over there. Nothing at all. <laughs> right now, as we take a look at the roadways, uh, still looking great out there with no delays. Let's take a look at Trans Guide as we move over from the map. You can see 410 and Fredericksburg Road, no issues there. 21 to Quarry looking pretty good. And 35 is Salado Creek. We're starting to see a few more vehicles on those southbound main lanes of 35, but really not enough that it should delay you right now. All travel times are well within the normal travel time range. 410 at Fredericksburg Road, travel in both directions, still running smoothly. And take a look up there, 410. 
at Northwest Military Highway. So far, eastbound and westbound lanes are still running smoothly at this point. Dry roads, so just watch your speed once you head out and watch that follow distance. Thank you, sir. Sue, mountain cedar sufferers are going to be getting those trees shaken again, huh? Yeah, it was amazing uh, seeing how the numbers went up over the weekend. Yeah. And today we don't have any big fronts out there, but you know, the latest number is still 26, almost 27,000. And then we got another big front tonight. There's another one coming up uh, Friday night. So I felt it as soon as we landed. Get ready. Yeah, a lot of and, and it's funny because even my wife, a lot of folks that haven't been sufferers sometimes are like, oh my God, it's just killing me. So your head hurt just a little. Uh. And uh, just think, once this comes to an end, then oak. Anyway, uh, take a look outside yeah, yeah. right now. Yeah, sorry about that, folks. Um, boy, beautiful sunset last night and uh, the night before that. It was gorgeous out there. It's going to be a beautiful sunrise this morning. And you can see we do have good visibility out there looking off to the uh, east. Very cold in the hill country. Freezing Kerrville, 31 Comfort and Tarpley, 43 in town, 50 at Canyon Lake. And then Floresville at 49 degrees, a little bit warmer going off to the east, relatively speaking, you know, mid 40s and uh, 50s. But also what most noticeably, the humidity. Now, even though these numbers obviously on the, the chart are very low, below 60, that's where you'll always like to be. But relative to the temperature, the humidity is very, very high high and so that with some other factors is why we do have some of that fog off to the east around Gonzales quarter mile visibility right now. That's the only spot reporting any fog. Now, of course, in your neighborhood in and around there, there could be some fog. Just be on the lookout for that. And a lot of times it does continue to get even thicker as we approach sunrise. Now, upstairs in the atmosphere, we had those obviously beautiful blue skies. It was so intensely beautiful blue yesterday. It was great looking a little bit of moisture aloft, so maybe kind of a milky shade of the sky today, which is sort of split in here. It's still going to be another fantastic day. We'll have temperatures in the low 70s, about 10 degrees above normal again today. And wind is not going to be too much of an issue today. Then tonight, about so say mid evening, just before the night be, we're going to see that front move on through here. The wind's going to be shifting around out of the north, primarily northwest. Uh, it's going to be breezy overnight and fairly breezy throughout the day tomorrow and of course, that's going to be shaking up those mountain cedar trees, and that pulls down some bone dry air with dew points tomorrow down in the uh, 20s, teens, even some single digits around here. Some of the driest air that we usually ever see around here around the country. Uh, there's not much going on. Everything is right up there to the north of us, and we don't have it really anything upstream for us. We've got that little bit of a front moving on through here. It's just going to kind of knock things back down to reality. We're 10 degrees above normal later on today. We'll be at a normal high temperature tomorrow, and then we're going to start to get a little bit milder. Now, once we get into Wednesday, Thursday, a lot more moisture is going to be coming on in here, and that's going to uh, give us a chance for some rain on Thursday and then early on Friday. I wouldn't get your hopes really high right now, but at least there'll be a few showers around here. Then the next front's going to be coming through by uh, Friday night into Saturday and perhaps even another uh, pretty good uh, chunk of cooler air next week. And long, long range. And again, this is two weeks down the road. There are some indications for another really cold chunk of air to move on in here. But of course, that's two weeks down the road, so we'll have to wait and see on that one. 66 degrees today at noon, mostly sunny skies. High temperature today up to 72, which again is 10 degrees above normal. Wind is not going to be a huge factor today. And then tonight, once the front moves through, it is going to be breezy, and that's going to knock temperatures down to normal readings tomorrow. Plenty of sunshine. Wednesday, another good looking day. The clouds are going to move in late Wednesday. We do have that chance of rain on Thursday, and then Friday. Probably in the first part of the day, a couple of leftover showers, mild Thursday and Friday. The next front comes in here. Unfortunately, it's going to shake up the uh, those infamous trees out there. But boy, it's setting up for a beautiful weekend again. We'll take it and please bring some of that rain to my house. Oh, no kidding. Thanks. Thank you, Mike. Right now it's 553, 43 degrees. A Lakers fan's trip to a basketball game turned into a night he would never forget. That's coming up next. Your pick three numbers, 713 Fireball 8, Daily 4, 1366 Fireball 9. And your catch five numbers, 5, 24, 26, 32, 34. A lot of numbers, 17, 20, 21, 25, 27, 44. And we have Powerball from Saturday, 111, 21, 25, 54 with a Powerball of 7.
Good morning. Coming up on GMA, the three biggest Jeopardy money winners ever are live. Ken Jennings, Brad Rutter, James Holsauer are here as they get ready for prime time and the big showdown. Who is the greatest of all time? We'll find out only on GMA. We'll see you all soon. Welcome back. Spurs kept up with the Bucks for nearly three quarters over the weekend, but then the Bucks pulled away to win 127-118. The San Antonio Spurs get another chance tonight. Spurs host the Milwaukee Bucks over at the AT&T Center starting at 7.30 this evening. Big night for a Lakers fan over in L.A. Check it out. 40-year-old Dean Tran was selected to shoot a half-court shot for a $100,000 prize during the Lakers-Pistons game, and he nailed it. After he made the fantastic shot, he even got to celebrate a little bit with LeBron James. When asked what he plans to do with the money, Tran said he might get a Ferrari, but he would have to check with his wife first. One of the smartest men I've ever met. 550, uh, 557, 557, 44 degrees. Whether it's on the baseball diamond, the soccer field, or basketball court, organized sports can have big benefits for kids. The problem, most kids stop playing early on. Still to come how experts are trying to change that trend. Trans Guide, back to work, back to school for some today. Quite a few more by tomorrow. We'll get your work week started with another look at time saver traffic coming up on GMSA. Police continue to search for the four suspects that shot two teenagers yesterday on the southeast side. Good morning, I'm Sarah Costa. We'll bring you the latest on that investigation. Back to school Monday for many as we look back towards downtown with one of our live cams. Your Monday forecast coming up. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And good morning. It is Monday. It is January 6th, and we say welcome back to the... Leslie Mouton. Well, it's good to be back, and I hope you had a blessed holiday, both Christmas and Hanukkah and New Year's. I cannot believe 2020 is here. It's going to be a perfect year because it's 2020. It is. We're starting out cold once again. Mountain Cedar continues to be a big problem, kind of in the heart of the Mountain Cedar season right now. Yeah, that's not the good part of 2020 right now. But, Mike, we have a chance of rain at least coming up. A little later this week. Yes, there is there is that chance. You're saying there's a chance. Uh, yeah, Mountain Cedar is sky high. And we're just down to our, our normal temperatures right now uh, here in town. 44 degrees, of low 40s is the normal. We've actually gone up one degree in the past hour. 42 Bulverde, uh, freezing in portions of the hill country. We are dealing with a little bit of fog off to the east. Uh, Gonzales had a half mile visibility right now. And then 7 LaGrange and Victoria. And these numbers have dropped slightly in the past of about 20, 15, 20 minutes. So just watch in our eastern counties because there's a little extra humidity out there and some of this may want to try and creep a little further to the west but it's not going to be a huge deal as far as the uh, the fog is concerned yeah you're talking about the mountain cedar 26,700 and change that was yesterday's count the updated reading is going to be coming out in about an hour wind is not going to be a huge factor but right in the heart of the season i don't i don't know why it would be dropping down and then just to add, kind of add insult to injury, we are going to be seeing uh, another front come through here later on tonight. And so, you know, that's going to give those trees a good shake. Temperatures are going to be staying in the, uh, well, about where they are right now. Low 40s here in town, 30s in portions of the hill country. And uh, wind is not going to be a huge factor today. Basically out of the west, southwest at about 5, 10 miles per hour. Uh, we're going to be in the mid-60s today at noon. And then top off on the warm side, getting up to 72 later on today with plenty of sunshine around here. And then it's later on tonight when that front starts to move on through. And that's going to be kind of a reality check as well as far as getting us back down to normal readings. We'll talk about those rain chances, and it looks like another fantastic weekend. Details in a few minutes. Time saver traffic. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo, and still seeing everything looking pretty good on the map right now. So far, so good, Mike. We're doing very, very well out there on the roadway. So as we transition from the map over to TransGuide, we can give folks a first-hand view. As you can see there, uh, 410 and Northwest Military Highway, no issues. We're starting to see some increases in the traffic, both in the east and the westbound lanes. Now, remember, most folks, uh, almost everyone, back to work and back to school today, more importantly. So watch out for those school zones, reduce that speed, increase that following distance, and put away those distractions this morning. Mark? Thank you, Marcus. Now the latest on a shooting investigation, two teenagers, one as young as 16 years old, sprayed with bullets at a southeast side apartment Sunday. San Antonio police continue to look for suspects this morning. It happened in an apartment complex on Pecan Grove. Sarah Costa is live downtown with the latest on our top story this morning. Sarah, what can you tell us about the case? 
Good morning. Well, police are continuing to search for those four suspects that left those two teens hospitalized after they sprayed that their car with bullets this is happening nine in the morning yesterday as the 16 year old girl and 17 year old boy were sitting in a parked car at the apartment complex of Pecan Valley Golf Club Apartments. Police say the men opened fire at the teens that were sitting in the car. The girl, she was shot in the back and the boy was grazed by a bullet with his, his leg was grazed by a bullet, police say. Both were taken to Brook Army Medical Center, but they are expected to be okay. One of the weapons was recovered by police on scene. As for the suspects, police say they got away in a four door white car. Those suspects are believed to be in their late teens or early 20s. Live from downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. Thank you very much, Sarah. Vigil was held outside the Bear County Jail to remember an inmate who recently died while in custody. Yesterday, people gathered to remember 61-year-old Stephen Wayne Cole. He was a homeless man who couldn't pay $40 to a bail bondsman to be released from jail. Two other deaths were reported last year. In both cases, the inmates couldn't pay their bond of less than $100. Sheriff Salazar says Cole suffered from an underlying medical condition and chronic drug use, and the exact cause of his death has not been determined. Organizers of yesterday's vigil say they want to work alongside city leaders to find a solution to the issue. New this morning on KSAT.com, a large group of the country's governors have told the Trump administration their states will continue accepting refugees, but Governor Greg Abbott hasn't made clear if he'll add his name to that list. Elected officials have until January 21st to say if they will continue participating in the refugee resettlement program. This comes after a September executive order that requires resettlement agencies to have written consent from states and local entities before they resettle refugees within their boundaries. You can read more about this story on our homepage. Well, now to the latest out of the Middle East. A back and forth between the United States and Iran is heading towards a boiling point. Now an entire region is on edge. CNN's Camilla Bernal is keeping a close eye on the escalating situation. Here in the U.S., Qassam Soleimani is seen as a terrorist, as someone who has killed Americans. But in Iran, things are very different. There he is seen as a military hero, as someone who was fighting ISIS, which is why today thousands took to the streets to show him support, to honor his memory, as people were chanting death to America. A sea of people filling the streets in Iran Monday during the funeral services for Iranian General Qassam Soleimani. This just days after Iran's top general was killed by a U.S. drone strike at the Baghdad airport. Soleimani's daughter says her father's death will bring darker days for the U.S. and Iran has vowed revenge. The only thing that can end this period of war is for the Americans to receive a blow that is equal to the blow they've inflicted. Iraq's parliament voted Sunday to obligate the government to work towards removing all foreign troops from the country. It is in the interest of both Iraq and the U.S. to end foreign troop presence in Iraq. Back in the U.S., thousands of troops are getting ready to deploy to the Middle East as tensions in the region continue to escalate. And President Donald Trump says if Iran tries to retaliate, the U.S. will quickly and fully strike back and perhaps in a disproportionate manner. But House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says not so fast. She sent a letter saying the House of Representatives will introduce a vote on a war powers resolution that limits President Trump's potential military action in regards to Iran. And in Iran, uh, the military advisor to the Supreme Leader has already said that they are going to fight back and that it is going to be a military strike. Uh, both President Trump and Secretary of State Mike Pompeo says America is ready for whatever comes. They are ready to fight back. Reporting in Washington, I'm Camila Burnell. Back to you. Firefighters from the United States have arrived in Sydney to assist their Australian colleagues in battling wildfires. Australian naval officers also meeting with local authorities to offer help. Many people have been advised to leave for evacuation centers. Rain has started to fall, but not across all affected areas. And it's not enough to douse the fires. The deadly flames have killed two people and destroyed hundreds of properties. Four people are unaccounted for. Cooler weather has allowed military helicopters to deliver supplies to isolated communities with the help and help with evacuations. Look for the latest on this story coming up on Good Morning America beginning at 7. 
Jury selection begins today in Harvey Weinstein's trial in New York City. The former movie mogul facing first and third degree rape charges brought by two women. This is the first criminal case against Weinstein. Could face up to life in prison if convicted on the most serious charges. 608, 44 degrees. Well, still to come, everyone is buzzing about Hollywood's golden night, the Golden Globes. Tom Hanks was in tears. Ellen DeGeneres honored for her career. And host Ricky Gervais targeted, well, just about everyone. A little recap coming up in your GMA First Look. After the break, a look at some of the stories you may have missed over the weekend. They're trending now on KSAT.com. And live cam giving us a look outside, a little bit cool. Don't forget to put a, kid, a jacket on the kiddos if yours are heading back to school today. Mike has your full forecast coming up. Training now on KSAT.com. Jason Garrett out as head coach of the Dallas Cowboys. Owner Jerry Jones released a statement yesterday saying the team will not seek a contract extension for Garrett after 10 years. Comes amid reports at least two former NFL coaches have been interviewed to be his replacement. As David Jones said in part, quote, Jason Garrett's legacy with the Dallas Cowboys will always be that of someone who strived for greatness every day that he walked through the door and as someone who instilled the virtues of enthusiasm, hard work, and appreciation for the profession in all of the men who played with him and for him. You can read more about this story on our homepage. And check this out. Oreo is out with two new flavors to kick off the new year. Caramel coconut Oreos and chocolate marshmallow Oreos were announced back in November and now they're available. New chocolate marshmallow Oreos have marshmallow pieces in the cookie and chocolate marshmallow cream in the filling. There are also reports of an amazing sounding tiramisu Oreo. It does sound good. A representative for cookie maker Nabisco says they will be released in April for a limited time. Oh, they're already testing our New Year's resolutions, well, aren't Mike, they? Well, Mike, you are, have something to say and I has, he has some little eye rolls going on here. Stick with regular Oreos. <laughs> They're still you available. You dunk them in milk? Dunk them in melted chocolate. In, mel in melted chocolate? Yeah. Well, then you're messing with the Oreos. But you stick with the original Oreo. Mm -hmm. It's like dunk them Are in milk. Are you going to break them apart and you lick the center of them? Yes. And then you eat the, the cookie part of it. But dip them in chocolate. Mm. I like, the, I like but, the ones with the minty, the minty uh, white stuff in it. Dip them in milk chocolate. An Oreo with the minty white stuff mm -hmm. in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, gr it's green. Makes sense, right? Okay. It's the green white stuff. The green yeah, minty. That's what I meant. It's yeah. the green Something minty. like that. 614, 44 degrees. Here's Marcus. We Marcus, digress. Do you have anything you'd like to say about Oreo cookies? Uh, that, that conversation over there is way over my head. I'm just stick to traffic here <laughs> <laughs> right now. What we're looking at so far, no issues uh, out there on the roadway. So that's a great start to this work week. As we take a look at Trans Guide, you can see 3537, the interchange here in the downtown vicinity. No problems there. Starting to get a steady stream on those northbound main lanes at 35. However, no delays at this point. And then 35 and 410 up on the northeast side, you can also see a steady stream of traffic. Those are the headlights southbound 35, making their way past that 410 west cutoff heading towards the downtown vicinity from 410 and 35 up on the northeast side. Sounds like a sugar rush going on over here. Oh, pretty much. Probably the last thing we need. But it's one of those Keep things. Keep you awake. Why mess with perfection? And Oreos are pretty, just the perfect one. Well, so you're a purist to, to a point. Except to a, to he dips them in chocolate instead of milk. That is not an Oreo purist. An Oreo purist dips them in How milk. Chocolate milk. Now anyway, you're talking. No, regular milk, yeah. Anyway, uh, take a look at this picture. This is absolutely gorgeous out there. Wait, it turns them into chocolate milk because of the Oreo. Cookie. Well, if you leave it in there long enough, yes. So, but then that's a whole different topic. Or Oreo's broken up an ice cream. Oreo cookie ice cream, that's good too. All right, back to the topic at hand. Sunrise at uh, Canyon Lake. Oh my goodness, that was absolutely beautiful. Sunrise this morning is going to be pretty darn nice as well. It's going to be coming up in a little more than an hour now. And we do have some pretty cold temperatures out there, although this is basically normal. 44 degrees, we're actually a degree or two above that, but freezing in parts of the hill country. 45 divine, 47 up the road in New Braunfels. And then it's not like it's that much warmer off to the east, but we do have a lot more humidity off to the east, relatively speaking. So we've got these dew points that are matching the uh, actual air temperatures. And so basically 100% humidity out there, very light winds, some other factors. And that's why we do have some fog to deal with. And it's really dropped down now at LaGrange at a quarter mile. It was hovering about seven miles for a while, half mile Gonzalez, and it's dropped down in Victoria. So you want to watch it as this tries to maybe creep a little bit further to the west. Most of it's going to be confined off in our eastern counties today. Today, but 
just kind of keep that in mind. We do have a little bit more moisture aloft in the atmosphere, and what that means is, is those skies yesterday, of course, were just an intense blue. Maybe a, not quite as vivid a blue sky today, a milky shade of the sky as I Speaking of milk uh, with Oreos, uh, as I like to describe it, though, but um, it's still going to be a fantastic day today. Now, as far as the front coming through tonight, we will have uh, basically light wind all day long. And then later on, about, say, 9, 10 o'clock is when that front starts to work its way on through here. The wind's going to be shifting around out of the north to northwest. It is going to be breezy and breezy tomorrow. Very, very dry air is going to be coming on in here. You'll notice how dry it is, especially in the hill country tomorrow with those dew points down in the single digits, which again is bone dry air. And you know, it's going to be shaking up the uh, the mountain cedar trees. Now, as far as the upper level steering winds, there's the little front that moves on through. It's just a kind of a reality check that's going to put us back down to normal readings tomorrow. As far as high temperatures will be in the low 60s. And then we start to get a bit milder in behind that for Thursday and Friday, and we'll have more moisture coming on in here, and that's when we have our chance for some rain. Then another front comes through on Friday. That'll clear things out, set us up for a fantastic looking weekend. I mean, two in a row as far as the weekends are concerned, gonna be just wonderful. Then going into next week, we may actually have another bit of a front by the middle of the week, and there are some indications that some of this really cold air up there in Canada, which is, it's pretty darn cold. I mean, we've got, teens up there in the northern United States, but still, you know, negative uh, 20s and even close to negative 30s up there. There are some indications. Again, it's long range, but by the latter part of next week, we could be seeing a pretty good chunk of cold air coming down here. Today, 66 degrees at noon, mostly sunny skies and high temperature up to 72, 10 above normal with wind out of the west at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. So not a huge breeze today, but with that front moving on through here, the wind is going to be shifting around out of the north to northwest, and it's going to shake up those trees, of course. We'll have temperatures back down to normal readings tomorrow, and then pretty cold on Wednesday, right around 36 here in town. Definitely a good hard freeze in the hill country. A couple of showers Thursday and Friday, especially uh, Thursday later, and then that front comes through, and that's going to clear us out for the weekend. Rain on my house, please. Rain on everybody's house a lot. Yeah, please. But don't get your hopes too high. We, okay, we'll try to keep things in check. 619, 44 degrees. But no promises. Just ahead, Samsung expected to unveil its newest smartphone soon. Details coming up in your consumer news. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it right now on KZ.com for your chance to win a $25 gift card from We Are Circle K. We could all use an extra $100. That's a reason to switch to Jackson Hewitt, conveniently located in Walmart. Now enjoy a bonus gift card up to $100 when you file taxes with Jackson Hewitt and get part of your refund on a Walmart gift card. Get your bonus at Jackson Hewitt at Walmart. You've tried so many moisturizers, but one blows them all out of the water. Hydro Boost with hyaluronic acid to plump skin cells so it bounces back. Neutrogena and for body, Hydro Boost Body Gel Cream. I am totally blind, and Non24 can throw my days and nights out of sync, keeping me from the things I love to do. Talk to your doctor and call 844-214-2424. Where does your almond milk come from? Almond breed starts here. With our almond trees in our blue diamond orchard in California, my parents' job is to look after them. And it's my job to test the product. The best almonds make the best almond milk. Blue Diamond Almond Breeze. Hey there, folks, TJ Holmes here in Hollywood. It's a heck of a show, right? Saw a lot during the Golden Globes. A lot happened, but you know there's some stuff you didn't see, a whole lot of stuff, a whole lot of good stuff you didn't see, and it happened right here backstage. <laughs> Here's your GMA first look. Aquafina, the You just made history. It's the first woman of Asian descent to win this particular award. Yeah, 
uh, yeah, I, I, that was information that's relatively new to me. That's an incredible to, to, to break through, to break down that door. Um, and there's this other side that you really hope that there would be more, and you hope that um, if now's the time, you know, that it continues on. I, I can't be the, the last. And that's just a little taste, a little sneak peek of some of the stuff that took place back here. We had every A-lister just about come through after they gave their speeches, came back and hung out with us backstage a little bit. You'll see much more of that coming up on GMA, of course, 7 a.m., and I will see you there. But for now, this is your GMA First Look. To Consumer News, Samsung ready to roll out some new products. The company says they'll unveil their Galaxy S11 phones on February 11. Analysts expect three new devices as well as a foldable rival to Motorola's Razer phone. Features can include 5G, a new camera, and a new battery. Samsung will also follow through on plans to sell its rotating television outside of Korea. The TV is called the Seiro. It has a 4K display that can swivel between landscape and portrait. Consumer Electronics Show getting underway in Las Vegas, and here's the high-tech gadget getting much of the attention this year. Charmin pumped about its so-called Rollbot. Get this, the robot will fetch a new roll of toilet paper for you in your time of need. It is controlled by your smartphone, which will eventually need to be wiped down. 625, 44 degrees. <laughs> well, that's hilarious. Here's a look at what's coming up in our next half hour. New warnings after an Iranian commander is killed, what Iran is promising to do next, and how the U.S. is responding. I'm Karina Mitchell in New York. I'll have that story coming up. Frozen 2 is still hot. $11.3 million gave the sequel fifth place and a domestic total of $450 million. The latest take on The Grudge managed a fourth place debut with $11.3 million, despite a rare F grade from audience survey firm CinemaScore. The new take on Little Women moved up a spot to third place, earning $13.6 million. Welcome to Jumanji. Jumanji The Next Level stayed in second place. $26.5 million gave it $236 million domestic. Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker topped the chart for the third straight weekend, grossing $33.7 million for a domestic total of $451 million. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Back to work, back to school for many today. I-10 at Callahan, and the sun's trying to come up out there on the horizon at 10 and 16.04. And taking a look outside with live cam, waiting for that sun to rise. It's going to be a beautiful sunrise today. Mike is standing by with your forecast. And good mo Monday morning to you. It is 630 on your January 6th. The whole team is back after the holidays. Welcome to 2020 and hopefully you had a great New Year's. Marcus, how are we looking, sir? We're, we're off to a great start. Right now, no accidents. We haven't had an accident all morning long and the uh, roads are dry. So you can't ask for too much more than that other than having the day off. Boy, we've been fortunate today, haven't we, traffic-wise so far? Yeah, we've learned that a couple of school districts, SC, UCISD, and San Antonio Independent School District, don't go back till tomorrow. Okay, it's going to be another uh, good day to go back tomorrow. It's going to be on the chilly side. It's chilly out there right now. And we do have a little bit of fog off to these. That's the only problem. There's nothing in and around um, town right now, but off in our eastern counties and some of our eastern locations, there is some fog out there. Temperatures are in the low 40s here in town, which is uh, about normal jacket weather. It's freezing in parts of the hill country. And then later on today, make sure the kids have their name in the jacket so they don't lose it because they ain't going to be wearing it. 72 for a high temperature with mostly sunny skies. We've got another big front moving through tonight. Unfortunately, that's probably going to be giving those mountain cedar trees another good shake. It looks like we are starting to see the early glow of the sunrise. Yeah, it's starting to line up a little bit there along the uh, horizon. 44 in town, 38 Helotus and freezing, as I mentioned, out in the hill country. And as far as the uh, fog is concerned, Gonzales half mile, quarter mile now, Victoria and LaGrange. So it started off OK uh, about an hour ago, even half an hour ago. And it, the visibility has definitely been dropping in our eastern counties as well as down around Corpus Christi. So watch out for that. It's going to be hanging around for the next uh, couple of hours. Probably may try and creep a little bit further off to the west. And it's not going to be a huge issue throughout the rest of the area, but uh, just off to the east is where some of that thicker fog is. Mountain Cedar, 26,760. That was yesterday's rating. The updated count is going to be coming out in about a half an hour or so. 
Can't see any reason why it's going to be going down. It's probably going to be going up given that front moving through later on tonight. Got some uh, nice weather for the middle part of the week, and then we do at least have a rain chance toward the mid to latter part of the week and another good weekend in store. All the details coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Yeah, it has been an unusually quiet morning for the big back to school, back to work morning. It's been very fortunate, uh, great driving conditions, uh, dry roads, no accidents out there. Well, now we're starting to see some congestion. Look at 1604 up there by Bandera Road. Those eastbound main lanes starting to show a little signs of congestion heading over towards that I-10-1604 interchange. But other than that, things actually look pretty good. Let's take a look outside through Transguide, 1604, Oklahoma. No problems there as folks line up to take that uh, eastbound Highway 151 exit and then 410 Northwest Military Highway. Traffic in both directions is starting to pick up. Mark. Happening today, part of the San Antonio Riverwalk will be drained. It's an effort to monitor a threat for non-native invasive species. Sarah Costa live downtown. Sarah, do we know what species we're talking about here concern wise? Yeah, it's a new species that we've been found recently along the San Antonio River. It's called the apple snail and the San Antonio River Authority plans on removing these apple snails while they do maintenance for the annual river drain. Now, that is a native of South America. These snails can grow up to six inches and their presence is often indicated by bright pink egg sacs that contain thousands of individual eggs. The River Authority staff removed 79 apple snail egg sacs egg egg sacks, not snacks from the river walk on October 31st. The River Authority scientific staff will be working to save and relocate native aquatic species to other appropriate parts of the river while leveraging the opportunity of lower water levels in the river walk and remove any of those non native invasive species. The drainage will take place from Josephine Street to Nueva Street. The river walk loop and convention center extension will not be drained, making it possible for the Go Rio River cruises to continue operations along a slightly modified path. Now that drainage will start around one o'clock today. It is unclear how long those certain parts of the river will remain drained. Live from downtown, I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. Thank you, Sarah. Now to more fallout this morning from the U.S. drone attack that killed Iran's top military leader. Iran says it will no longer abide by the terms of the 2015 nuclear agreement. And then Iraq lawmakers have taken a symbolic vote to expel U.S. troops from the country. ABC's Karina Mitchell has the latest. Overnight, President Trump doubling down on striking cultural sites in Iran as tensions escalate in the Middle East after the killing of Iran's top military commander. Trump said the U.S. will strike back if Iran retaliates, citing 52 possible targets identified in Iran, some of them cultural sites. That comment drew criticism because targeting cultural sites could be considered a war crime under international agreements. As you know, the Geneva Conventions outlaw attacks on cultural objects and places of worship. We'll behave inside the system. We, we always have and we always will. In Iran, all 290 members of that country's parliament chanted, quote, death to America. And the general who's replacing Soleimani is vowing to, quote, take revenge as the country announces it will no longer abide by the uranium enrichment limits in the 2015 nuclear deal. The back and forth threats come after President Trump ordered the strike on Qasem Soleimani near the Baghdad airport last week. U.S. officials claim they had intelligence that he was going to carry out acts that would cost American lives. It's impossible to overstate the significance of the attack that takes out Qasem Soleimani. In response, Iraq's parliament in a non-binding decision has voted to expel U.S. troops from the country. Back here at home, Democrats are criticizing the president after he appeared to declare his tweets would serve as notification to the United States Congress that should Iran strike any U.S. person or target, the United States will quickly and fully strike back. You know, I hate to say this, but I think it's President Trump raising his middle finger at the Congress. Here at home, there is no specific threat, but officials warn Iran does have potential assets inside the U.S. as well as cyber warfare capabilities. Karina Mitchell, ABC News, New York. Five people are dead and dozens hurt after a multi-vehicle chain reaction crash on the Pennsylvania Highway Turnpike. That accident, which shut down the turnpike for several hours, involved a bus traveling from New York to Ohio and two semi-trucks. Investigators say some drivers on the road reported there was a change in weather, but it's unclear if that was a factor in the crash. The NTSB is assisting in the investigation.
Tonight, our San Antonio Spurs are back in action. Let's take on the Bucks at the AT&T Center. Tip-off is set for 7.30. They lost to Milwaukee over the weekend. Big weekend in the NFL playoffs. Here's a look at where the stand, things stand rather for the AFC Divisional Round. Saturday, Tennessee will take on the Ravens in Baltimore. That game starts at 7.15 p.m. Then Sunday, the Texans will take on the Chiefs in Kansas City. Uh, kickoff for that game is set at 2.05. In the NFC, Saturday, it's the Vikings at the Niners. That game starts at 3.35. Sunday, it's Seahawks at Packers. Kickoff set for 5.40 after some amazing games over this past weekend. Monday morning, glad you're with us. 637, 44 degrees. Coming up after the break, we're talking about organized sports and the big impact it can have on your kids. Six forty. Now, here's something to think about next time you drive your child to sports practice. Just two to three hours a week of practice boosts cardiovascular conditioning. Not to mention the social and emotional benefits of being part of a team. But there's a huge drop in organized sports participation. Our Eric Hernandez takes a look at what's causing it and how you can keep your kid in the game. The fields at this Washington D.C. rec center are packed well into the evening with organized travel teams logging practice time. Every day, at least like an hour and a half. I don't have to worry about schoolwork, don't have to worry about friends, all that stuff. I can just come here and play. For these athletes is a commitment beyond their middle school soccer teams. He's outside, that's my mo the most important thing. He's away from screen time. But participation in organized sports of all kinds is on the decline. It's estimated that as much as 70% of all participants quit by their teens. George Washington sports scientist Amanda Visek and her colleagues recruited nearly 250 players, parents, and coaches from a D.C. soccer league to define or map fun. They started first by asking the study participants to brainstorm all of the things that make sports fun. The list was long. Who would have thought, right, that fun, this three-letter word, could mean 81 specific things. Participants then organized the 81 factors into 11 categories and rated the importance of each determining the top three. Trying hard was number one, followed by positive team dynamics and positive coaching. All right. Is the coach a positive role model? Is she or he encouraging? The sex says parents play a vital role too. She says keep it positive, offer encouragement and support. Keep the focus on what kids are learning and ask what was most rewarding. In case you were curious, the sports scientists say winning was one of the 81 factors that participants named, but it was not anywhere near the top of the list. In fact, winning came in as sports fun factor number 41. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. The 24th season of The Bachelor premieres tonight right here on KSAT 12. 28-year-old Peter Weber, a Delta Airlines pilot from California, was chosen to be the season's bachelor. He finished third on last season The Bachelorette with Hannah Brown. All of the drama kicks off tonight at 7. Right now, 643 on your Monday morning. Any drama on the roadways? Well, we do have a minor accident, not a major accident, minor accident, and it's on the access road. This is going to affect those folks that are outbound on I-10 uh, headed towards 1604. So uh, we're going to move uh, from this wide map. We're going to zoom into westbound I-10 access road right before you get to 1604, right before the Cloverleaf on that access road. That's where we have the uh, accident there in the clearing stages. Uh, take a look right now. This is uh, 35 at Cesar Chavez, no problems there, and I-10 at Brazos. You can see the uh, upper decks there of I-10 still moving along fairly well, so no problems there. As we check here, there's the actual I-10 604 interchange. As you can see, business as usual, seem, they seem to be unaffected by that accident on the access road. Thank you, Marcus. Of course, today is the 12th day of Christmas. Yes. Epiphany, King's Day. Which, is this the day you're supposed to have your Christmas tree taken down by? Yes, a lot of people leave it up uh, till then. This is the, as tradition goes, the day when the three kings first visited when Jesus. They, yeah, when they first, arrived. When they brought they baked goods. And in, <laughs> to Old commemorate that, our friends at La Familia Cortez restaurants, La Margarita Ooh, and Mi Tierra, the king cake. made Fabulous. this. And let Ooh. me tell you, there's a lot of cake going on here. This thing weighs a lot. Don't forget about that great bakery there 
at Meteora. I was there over the weekend and it's oh, really? looking good. I saw a couple of these at the station, so they sent several. Yeah, they sent a, they sent a couple of them. One's already it's probably been devoured mm. there. Oh, I thought somebody was coming. Somebody just just the cake. <laughs> the door, the door open, three people so, just ran Kevin out. Kevin went to get plates, I think. <laughs> Thank you very, very much for that. And, it's beautiful. Um, yeah, it, it is gorgeous, so appreciate it. Mm. Okay, uh, mm. don't look at the caption of this picture, okay. but what do you think that is? Looks like raindrops. It, well, on the first look, or it looks it like pollen? snow. This no. isn't snow. The cedar pollen is heavy tonight in New Braunfels. Oh. Ooh. Ouch. That's just, that's unbelievable to look at. Yeah. And we're going to get another big front moving through tonight. Okay, if you, cedar notwithstanding, if you can just forget about that, hopefully, unless you're a sufferer. But look at the, the sunrise this morning. Absolutely gorgeous out there. A couple of uh, high wispy clouds. 44 degrees in town. Grab a coat. 30 comfort. Uh, 31 in Tarpley. 47 in Floresville. And uh, temperatures off to the east aren't that much colder or that much warmer, pardon me, but we do have a lot more humidity out here relative to the temperatures, and so that's why we are starting to see some fog off to the east. A quarter mile visibility, Gonzales, Grange, Victoria, a little bit down around Corpus Christi. So this fog is going to be uh, kind of sticking around for the next few hours. Watch it even uh, maybe approaching portions of Guadalupe, Wilson counties for a little bit of that uh, that patchy fog. We've got some moisture upstairs in the atmosphere, and so we may have a little bit of a milky shade of the sky. Uh, today, but still it's going to be a fantastic day. Wind is not going to be a huge issue today. Um, and what it's going to do, though, it'll be primarily out of the uh, west to uh, southwest. Then later on tonight, this front's going to move through and that's going to pull in this really, really dry air around here. And we're going to see these dew points just plummet down into the single digits in parts of the hill country by tomorrow. And the wind is going to be shifting around once that front moves on through. So that's probably going to give the mountain cedar trees a pretty good shake. Then as we go into the mid to latter portion of the week, say late Wednesday, Thursday, that's when we'll start to see a chance for some rain. So here's the first front that comes on through that little bit of a kind of a wave moving on through here. We get a bit of a reality check in behind it. So temperatures instead of being in the low 70s like today will be in the low 60s for a high temperature tomorrow, but a beautiful day and that's a normal high temperature. Then going into Wednesday, Thursday, more moisture is going to be coming back on in here. So that's when we have a chance for some rain. Keep your fingers crossed. I don't think it's going to be a great shot at rain, but at least we'll have some around here. Another front's going to move through then Friday into Saturday and that's going to we'll have clouds throughout the day on Friday, maybe even some rain starting off the day and then this is going to be clearing us out. Another fantastic weekend, just a prize winning weekend and then going into the first part of next week, it looks like yet another front is going to be trying to slide on in here and some really, really cold air is brewing up there in Canada again, that purple blob right behind that banner up there and there are some indications now again, it's still week and a half or so away, but there are some long range computer models that want to try and get a really cold chunk of air coming in here by the end of next week. Obviously, that's a wait and see situation. 66 degrees today at noon, mostly sunny skies. High temperature today up to 72. Again, lots of sunshine out there. Wind is not going to be a big factor today. Then tonight, front moves through just uh, about mid evening or right before the night beat tonight. And that's going to shift the winds around and pull down some colder air. 61, sunny skies tomorrow, beautiful day. And then it gets really cold Wednesday morning down in the 30s. We will have more clouds late in the day on Wednesday, maybe a couple of sprinkles overnight, and then chance for some rain on Thursday and early Friday. Very mild both those days. The next front will come through here, and that's going to give us a fantastic looking weekend. Okay, we are spoiled with that. You're just ready to dig in, aren't you? Who are you talking to, me or him? I was talking to him, but you were up with him. <laughs> I definitely am. Right my now, hands, my hands are fairly clean. No, uh, no, uh, nope. Mm -mm, nope. 648, 44 degrees. Can we just bite it? No, get a Instead knife. You... Get a knife and a plate. Tomorrow on GMSA, the top app trends that are likely to impact you this year. Outside with live cam, back to work, back to school. Beautiful start to the day. You're watching GMSA. The new GD to know before you go is coming up. Thanks.
Good morning. Coming up on GMA, the three biggest Jeopardy money winners ever are live. Ken Jennings, Brad Rutter, James Holsauer are here as they get ready for prime time and the big showdown. Who is the greatest of all time? We'll find out only on GMA. We'll see you all soon. Part of the San Antonio River Walk will be drained today. Good morning. I'm Sarah Acosta. It's an effort to monitor the threat of a non invasive species. New species of snail recently found on the San Antonio River called the apple snail. The San Antonio River Authority plans on removing them while conducting maintenance during the annual river drain. The River Authority will be leveraging the opportunity of lower water levels in the river walk and remove any non native invasive species. The drainage will take place from Josephine Street to Nueva Street, where parts of the river walk will remain open and not drained. The drainage will be around 1 p.m. today. It is not clear how long certain parts of the river will remain drained. From downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. A visitation will be held today for fallen San, An San Antonio ISD officer Cliff Martinez. He was hit by two suspects in a car and killed while working off duty as a security guard last month at an IHOP on the southeast side. Visitation will be held later today from 4 to 9 p.m. at Porter Loring Mortuary. That's 1101 McCullough Avenue. Services are set for 10 15 tomorrow morning at Community Bible Church. That address is 2477 North Loop 1604 East. Right now on KSAT.com, you can submit your questions to Ask Mayor Ron Nirenberg. It's part of a new segment called Leading Essay. Our Max Massey will be sitting down with leaders of San Antonio to talk about current issues in our community, what's being done to solve problems, and about the future. That segment will air Sunday mornings at 8 a.m. He will actually be talking to the mayor later today, so get those questions in right now at KSAT.com. We've already kind of touched on this this morning, but coming up later today on GMS 8-9, Christmas season still not over for some people. No, Catholics continue the Christmas celebration well into January. One of the big celebrations is Dia de Reyes, or Three Kings Day. In Mexico, Catholics spend the day with family, and they make warm, sweet bread, sweet rather bread known as Rosco de Reyes. Alicia Pereira visits La Panandaria and make, shows how making this dish is a lengthy yet fun process. That's today at 9 after Good Morning America. And I think we get to eat some of that, too. I hope so. Let's check on the roadways. Marcus, what's happening? Well, right now we still have just that one accident, so we're looking at the access road of I-10 outbound. So westbound lanes of I-10 headed from 410 back out towards 1604 uh, right before you reach the Cloverleaf on the access road. That's where we have uh, that accident still in the clearing stages. And then this is I-10 and Frio. As you can see there, there's the city skyline with the sun coming up. Folks, don't forget, take those sunglasses with you. You cut down on the glare throughout the day. And of course, watch that following distance once you head out. Mike? Beautiful way to start this Monday, first full week of the new year. And wow, we've got a couple of wispy clouds out there. It is cold, though, so grab a jacket. 43 in town, freezing parts of the hill country. We do have a little bit of fog off to the east. As a matter of fact, now New Braunfels is seeing some fog down to three miles visibility and much thicker off to the uh, east of there. And throughout the rest of today, we'll make it up to 66 at noon, 72 for a high temperature. Then a big front moves through tonight, and that's going to get us back down to reality tomorrow. Keep your fingers crossed for some rain Thursday and Friday. All right, thank you very much, Mike, and thank you so much for spending your Monday morning with us. GMA is next, GMSA 9. We'll see you in a couple hours.